Welcome to Different Gravy, not just another Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm one of the hosts, Richard Miller, and my co-host, who can take a rainbow, wrap it in a sigh, soak it in the sun, and make a strawberry lemon pie. The Gledel Man can. How are you doing today, Luke Gledelman Gledel? <laughs> Luke Gledelman Gledel. Yes. So nice, he's a Gledelman twice. Exactly. Uh, excellent. Uh, I'm always um, I'm always rich every time you introduce me. I, I don't know ever how I could follow that. So actually, this time I conjured up a little bit of an intro for yourself. So I'd like to just kind of uh, intro yourself. So Please. let's uh, let's start from the top. Welcome to Different Gravy. Not just another Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm one of the co-hosts, uh, Lou Gledel, and joining me as always is a man who he recently went and took a DNA test and found out he's a hundred percent that rich. It's Richard Miller. How are you, Richard? Beautiful, beautiful. I think you, I think you get the job, Luke. I think it's yours. <laughs> I don't want it. I, I want it to be with you. I think you do a good job of it. Anyway, I just like doing dumb intros. So who Love it. Know. Good old Lizzo. And like Lizzo, you know, why Wednesday great till they're going to be great? Yeah, too right. Too right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's sort of the story of the week, isn't it? Um, yes. We should, you know, let's 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 cover the, the, uh, the, the happenings of the week that's been. Breaking hoo-hoos. So, yeah, the main event really was the game against Charlton. And um, it was uh, it was an event. It was a main event that happened on a Wednesday. It happened. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. And the result was uh, a technical knockout for victory. <laughs> we won on points somehow. They managed to find so much... a loophole in the rules that allowed us to score a goal. <laughs> Not so much let's get ready to rumble as let's get ready to ruffle their hair gently and give them a little <laughs> pat on the bum as they leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, two kind of uh, incidental things I want to bring up. There was the uh, classic 90 plus fourth minute Charlton Athletic uh, tweet saying that they were going to take a point and be happy with that. And then a minute later, we stuck it up them in quite brilliant fashion. It is so nice to see a team that, you know, from seemingly minute one was engaged in the very worst kind of, you know, Billy Davis-esque dark arts nonsense, you know, rolling around, playing for time, goalkeepers taking goal kicks from... I thought it was going to take it from the right-hand sides, but actually have decided to take it from the left-hand sides. And now a goal kick takes a minute and a half. Just constant nonsense from Charlton. Um, and it's so nice when their time wasting comes to bite them on the, the anus uh, in, in the fashion of uh, Stephen Fletcher putting his uh, slightly hairy, slightly bald head on, on the end of a, 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 a sort of bobbling ball and uh, grabbing another goal for himself. Yeah, getting up to um, probably one of his biggest, highest career bests of uh, of a good while and 13 goals for the season. So th- yeah, I think 13 League goals is is his best ever haul in the league, but um, he only needs one more to match his best ever season overall, I think. I think 14 was his, uh, when we were poring over those figures earlier in the season, I think 14 was his best season, full stop. So uh, mm-hmm. it's it's been nice to see him come back. He obviously looked pretty bright in his little, uh, one of his, you know, one of his cameos. Um, but this... Well, it was just nice to have him. He didn't really look great, did he? Let's be honest. Last time out, but this time he did look bright. He looked like mu- he looked much better in the in the in the space of one or two days than he'd done uh, than he'd done in in the previous match. So that that was really nice to see. He was putting himself about and uh, making a a giant Scottish nuisance of himself. <laughs> And also uh, from my uh, pithy analysis of the game, I want to give a shout out to uh, Lee Boyer. Lee Boyer, who I've made the comment resembles uh, Martin Freeman, method acting and unemployed park keeper. Yes. Uh, oh, dear. Just a, I mean, Charlton, a team of scrotes and Lee Boyer himself, king of the scrotes. And uh, yeah, I can, I can sort of imagine him doing, you know, eye rolls and exaggerated size to, to camera. Um, 
with you know being Mar- Martin Freeman sort of tends to do Tim from the office in every single role that he plays and uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'd bring I'm sure he'd bring all the powers of Tim from the office to uh, the role of Charlton manager uh, yeah I mean Lee Lou- Bowie had the audacity to sort of say that they deserve to get at least a point from the game afterwards and Charlton just turned up to do nothing stall and sit in is what they all that they intended to do and they very nearly got rewarded for it um as uh, the other thing that's worth noting uh, again um we we will we'll, we will be covering the precise opposite to this uh, in today's game but um a rare a rare good performance from Tom Lee's Captain Tom Lee's. Yeah, and I mean, I thought we did the interesting thing that we kind of, yet yeah, it made a really good uh, late block in the game, and then kind of notched up with a kind of uh, the lumpiest of lumpy assists from a lump forward from uh, from old Liam Liam Jordan Palmer. And yes. um, yeah, it was a, a huge rarity to see Tom Lee's actually resemble a defender on the pitch. I mean, I would argue that there was very little asked of the defence by and large. You're right, he did make some useful uh, blocks when, as and when. Um, and I would say the only the only good, the only players that stood out really for Charlton were probably their goalkeeper and uh, Lyle Taylor. I thought he uh, he found space pretty well. He was also very unlucky not to completely uh, rain on our parade with a, a wonderful effort that, that struck the bar, having completely beaten Cameron Dawson in goal. Um, that could have been a very, very different story. <laughs> um, it did have the feel of that sort of game, that we were kind of throwing everything at it, making lots of chances, having lots of shots, and... Charlton were going to probably toddle up the pitch their one time in the game and uh, and grab a goal from it. Um, and it, it very, very nearly happened. But I think to, to sort of hark back to Lizzo and uh, and and uh, the lyrics of that Truth Hurts song, um, you know, why a Tom great till he got to be great? I think that's, uh, you know, when there was not very much asked of him, he really shone, he looked great. And then today when he had to do some actual defending, it all went down the toilet. <sighs> Should we mosey on to... I think uh, that's a brilliant segue to talk about (laughs) uh, what happened today at Hillsborough. Um, So before we get on, um, today is a special day. Today is a leap day, a real kind of rarity, the 29th of February. And looking at the history books, picking up the excellent Sheffield Wednesday on this day, written by uh, class Sheffield Wednesday historian Jason Dickinson, recommended for everyone for a nice little kind of dip in. So especially during these times, you can look back to, I don't know, times when Wednesday weren't complete shit. Um, Saturday, the 29th of February, 1992, Rich. So basically in front of uh, just 17,538 people at Stamford Bridge, the Mm -hmm. Owls outplayed Chelsea to uh, record a 3-0 win with the three W's scoring. Uh, Worthington, Williams, and Wilson. Oh. That kept Wednesday in the hunt for the title. So that's my friend, obviously, 28 years ago today. And wow. fast forward 28 years later, and we've moved on so much. Oh, <laughs> imagine how being so rubbish to be winning at Stamford Bridge. It's much nicer to lose at Hillsborough. <laughs> so. In terms of the t- the team that went out, there was just the one change uh, in that Fletcher started instead of uh, Wickham up front. Yeah, um, I mean, ugh, kind of going back from midweek from such a strong kind of Tom Lee's performance, I didn't besmirch him starting. Um, the thing, I, I don't want to say this because I don't want to just basically just be like, kind of, oh, in hindsight, I would have done this. Yeah. And I don't want to kind of look at something and say, that looks fine. However, then go back to, I do want to kind of say that I think we have... I, I think we've regressed back to four four two a little bit too quickly. That's what I kind of want to sense sense mm-hmm. and say. Um, I think it's been interesting with the stint of having Forestieri kind of up front or kind of playing in a hole is that he kind of drops back to help out, you know, help out alongside Bannon. Um, I think it worked. I didn't really... I, I mean, we. I think like the Charlton game now is a bit of an anomaly. I think it worked pretty well attacking-wise and control of the midfield against uh birmingham last week um but Mm. i don't know i'm beginning to think with some of that shape and formation i I think we just need to more times and not play a 4-3-3 really Uh, yeah yeah it's uh 
it just felt like for pretty much the whole first half, they had more men than us on the pitch. And the reason it felt like that was they had more midfielders than us in the middle. And we we were needing to sort of pull off odd kind of concertina style move, movement to to be able to spring from a really contracted shape to do anything. And we weren't up to it. We just couldn't do it. And they looked, they were very comfortable on the ball. So the fact that the midfield was congested didn't bother them at all. They were still able to play quality passes. And they, that meant they were able to to sort of dictate the play, um, stretch us and play through the massive, massive gaps we just kept leaving. Um and I, I also felt I was really surprised Fletcher started. I thought with this coming back very quickly and having quite a few games in quick succession, I'll be honest, I wouldn't have started him. I think I'll probably just gone with Wickham. Yeah. Um, I think right now the desperate thing seems to be. I feel from what I'm kind of seeing as a partnership, as a strike partnership. Um, I feel that on paper we kind of need both Wickham and Fletcher to be as sharp as anything. And we feel that every time, basically, it's, it's another chance to get people game time and minutes, you know, and hopefully the chance of something happening or the chance of, you know, maybe bringing that chance of something happening in the future a little bit further forward by playing them. But despite the fact I think we need right now, I think we kind of need both of them. I don't think we need both of them on the pitch at the same time. Yeah, there's, there was you. The thing is, there's so many weird. Football is such a strange. I suppose all sports have this, but there's so many weird, like unwritten rules that you have to play. So we, you know, we talked about the, you know, playing six and not really playing a proper striker. But sometimes that is going to be the best thing for a team to do. You know, sometimes that that is going to work. And and actually against Birmingham, it it worked pretty well. Mm. Um, it, it it took Forestieri really working his socks off to, to make the spaces, but it was quite effective, really. And he never really played a proper front man's role, but it worked pretty well. But like to, the other one, the other one of these little sort of unwritten rule hoodoo things is you don't change a winning team. I know, I and, know, yeah. But I think today, I just can't help but look at the fact that Chris Martin got three assists and think. Of course, Chris Martin played well because Tom Lee's just cannot play. Anyone who has even an inch of height on him, mm-hmm. he loses his tiny mind over it. He's never been good at dealing with it, but he's getting worse. And Berner, I, I just, I actually do want to make this official, by the way. Sorry. Um, I am officially removing Berner from my team of the decade. Um like removing wow. a, a peerage from someone who is posthumously found to be a sex pest. Uh, the crimes of Julian Berner in in 2020 mean he he's he's sullied his good name that he established in the previous decade, and therefore um, has been replaced with Graham Lee um, <laughs> or somebody else because um, he's not helping. He doesn't help when his partner is struggling. When his partner's doing well, Berner seems to be a nice addition to the centre-back pairing. <laughs> when his partner is really flailing, he doesn't seem to be able to bail them out at all. Um, but just this was a real masterclass in in awful defending from Tom Lees. Um, so do we, should we go through... Let's, let's be a bit more... Um, <laughs> structured in it and just go through so they switched the play pretty quickly and we didn't ever catch up to it and that's where the first goal kind of came from but it was a nice touchdown by Martin the midfield didn't get to Lawrence quickly enough he took a shot it wasn't a great shot it might not it might be one of those that if somebody actually looks at it it might it might well have been an own goal because I'm not sure Lawrence's shot was going in before it hit Kieran Lee it was very much from the uh, pinball table of the Adams family I think this one it was it was such a, a myriad of deflections uh from the bumpers was it Kieran Lee I think is the first kind yeah, of ricochet sort of came, off, came off his thigh and then which, uh, ended up from Tom Lee's, I think. Um, I don't think Lee's got close enough to do anything, to be honest. But uh, yeah, it was just a ridiculously spawny deflection, really. Yeah. But it felt just immediately that's the that's the good feeling from the uh, from the one nil. Just sapped and kind of drained from the game. Yeah. All, 
I get almost that. instantaneously. You know, the very first attack, effectively. <laughs> um, and really, a spawny deflection that could only really happen on a day that happens once every four years, right? Oh, exactly. Though I don't know, it, it does seem to be a kind of a bit Groundhog Day that these things happen to us because it was just it felt. I don't know. I, the pace of the game was kind of interesting. I mean, it was a little bit kind of back and forth. We were still kind of maybe in a kind of slightly slow Wednesday start trying to get into the pace of this, but it felt pretty savagely undeserved. Like, it really felt like a real kick, that goal. I, I think it, it was undeserved in that an early goal is always pretty tricky. I, I do think they'd already established themselves as the better team, mm. to be honest, um, because they just looked... They, they look. They actually look like a rare version of a team that actually is quite. Given the space and time which we seem to give them loads of, uh, they actually look like they know what they're doing when they play the ball around the back. They're trying to sort of open up spaces and then play the ball in behind you, and they were able to keep doing that. And I think they'd already done it a couple of times when they scored. Um, I just we'll, we'll get into this, but there was just. Tactically, this was a real mess. Monk got this horribly, horribly wrong. I don't know whether this was Derby playing a different style uh, and catching us out, but we were never, we were never going to do anything. This with that, the way we were playing in the first half was never going to accomplish anything with the way Derby were playing in the first half. I felt for the players because we just did not have the shape or the personnel to do anything. That but said, isn't that? kind of um isn't that basically a summarization of Sheffield Wednesday for a lot of times and Sheffield Wednesday this season especially but it's just I mean I'm looking through my notes it's like let off when Kieran Lee got caught in possession um there was a Lawrence Scott had a one-on-one with Dawson where he beat Dawson and it it bounced off Berner's leg behind you know he'd not meg Dawson that was really lucky that was the 16th minute it just was chance after every time they came forward, really. And we looked so hesitant in possession. We kept getting caught. The, I, 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 so for the second goal, I said, Lemony Snicket turns up because we had a series series of unfortunate events. <laughs> or seeing as Tom Lees is at the centre of it again, is it more of a Franco-Rogan joint, the disaster artist? Stupidly easy for Martin to pass to Lawrence, and he finished tidily in the far corner. And then they picked up a third at the 30th minute. Uh, we had another massive let off in the 33rd minute and it just nothing was working at, uh, at one point one of the best bits of attacking we did was Stephen Fletcher flicked it over his own head and managed to gather back his flick on I remember that yes oh um, uh, um so maybe kind of as a series of um after your series of unfortunate events and thinking about more kind of kind of references I can make from this. So as we found from a Hillsborough, there seemed to be a lot of pigeons on the pitch today. Mm. Um, so that made me feel that it had a bit of a kind of John Woo film uh, vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was also wondering if maybe then Lees and Berner did a face off with the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> And Tom Lees did it with the one that's dead, yeah? <laughs> yes, yes, as well. I'm aware that basically was dead as well. <laughs> he, brought, maybe... he, brought, he brought all of the presence to, of a corpse to his defending today, is what you're saying. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he does kind of have that kind of dead, dead expression on his face, that slightly kind of white <laughs> smile as well. I don't know. I, what did, I didn't know that basically John Woo and the Chuckle Brothers were in the same kind of cinematic universe until today. <laughs> but, but there we kind of go. Paul, are you going to sleep with my wife? Oh, I might do. Also, quite fancy your daughter. <laughs> oh, face off. <laughs> face off with the Chuckle Brothers would have been an absolute treat. Uh, <laughs> I also wonder as well if maybe there's a little bit of, um, you know, a little spot of Rotherham that has some slightly better defending than, um, you know, that's also a defensive partnership that's between, you know, the one who's alive and the one who's buried. Um, Yes. So I don't know. I don't know. What did the, uh, what was this? Um, I, I didn't know the circus was in town as well, right? Yeah. You know, and also want to say with this kind of comedy partnership between Lees and Berner, you know, I I um, I thought it was a bit strange, the bit where they started trying to uh, take that piano up the stairs in the first half. <laughs> 
Oh dear. And um, Berner went to poke Tom Lee's in, in both eyes at once with his fingers and Tom Lee's uh, put a straight hand up to block it. Uh, hilarious, classic uh, Groucho Marx-esque bit mm. from uh, from the, 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 the comedians at centre-back. So... Um, I think all I can really say about the first half is just a, basically a series of um, kind of terrible references of jokes. Um, yeah. So I thought self, I thought St. Andrews was last week, though, as Wednesday look free under par or something. Oh, very good. And also wondering if we should employ a caddy to recommend Murphy to use the shooting boots instead of his sand wedge ones. <laughs> So the, the, unfortunately, let's cover the third goal was um, was a howler from Harris this time. So he mm-hmm. blindly passed it across the middle of our half. Funnily enough, found that man Chris Martin again, and uh, he, he he got his his hat trick of assists finished off with a nice a nice ball through. Um, we then brought Wickham on for Harris. <laughs> Maybe just to punish Harris. Um, and then the only other thing I noted in the half was that Bannon got a yellow card for a really awful, awful tackle. <laughs> uh, which the, the Wednesday commentators completely missed. They thought it was offside or something that we were still a bit blown for. Um, I offer, uh, there was nobody who came out to warm up for a long, long time. And then when I offered it, he got a huge cheer from the uh, the crowd at halftime. Um <sighs> But then that was the two changes we made, wasn't it, at halftime? So we brought on uh, Windass and for Fletcher. Which, I, yeah, I just, you know, kind of going back to that mentality of saying, basically, you know, I think we need Wickham and Fletcher on fire, but I don't think we need them on fire and on the pitch at the same time. Mm. I don't think that's going to work. I, I know... I don't know. It just it just We've it, made two big men work with New You though, and surely surely Wickham's as good as New You. You'd think. I just I don't think it works for some not reason. Not at the moment. Just, it definitely is not working at the moment. I don't know. But it just I I felt I, I felt I felt damning the fact that we tried to bring in that partnership and tried to play with that formation to try and cause some damage up front against Derby, who I think are a team who looked like they uh, have a bit of a kind of soft underbelly for conceding goals yes. recently, from what I kind of understand about looking at Derby County in their recent... Um, Definitely, yeah. You know, I mean, they are led by Philippe Cocu, and we are seemingly led by Coco the Clown, you know. <laughs> So I, I get that mentality, but then the fact that basically we gave it what all of eight minutes basically before we then hauled off Fletcher at half time. Yeah. And yeah. I hope Fletcher is hauled off for a strategic reason and not because he's injured, because then I'm just gonna be upset. I, I heard he was limping at one point, but um oh. we'll see. So, we'll see. But he what you can say is once again, a bit like the Blackburn game, you're at half time in a position where you could kinda take them anybody off and make a case for it. Yeah. No, Fletcher had done nothing. Forestieri had done less than Fletcher. Uh, Murphy, again, probably one of the brighter sparks, but hadn't got much going. So you, you've left with a maybe only Fox and Palmer that you'd keep in the in the game uh, if you would, you know, if you're judging everyone on merit. Um, so I know, I do know what you're saying, but it was, well, you know, we we. We started pretty brightly, uh, second we half. We did. And, you know, we nearly got a... I was kind of heartbroken we didn't get that own goal from Derby. Because yeah, I thought that would it. hopefully be a parity to the, you know, fortuitous uh, first goal um, that they scored today. Um, yeah, they nearly the, the, defend, the Derby defender nearly um, nearly rolled that one in uh, lovely. It was nearly a great finish from him. It was. It was very close. Um, but I think more often than not, it was the quality of delivery that just led us down. Um, uh, Windy Ass had that one from the right hand side, which went went out for a throw in on the opposite side, and and then Forestieri took that free kick on the the sort of near side flank for the for the corner for the uh, for the camera, and uh, just dreadfully punted it straight out of play. Um, but then we did put together some quality. So the fifty sixth minute. We had sort of two great chances in a row. So it was a lovely pass from uh, Flatulent Joshua. Um, w- w- Wickham rounded the goalie. Couldn't get his shot away, really. Didn't get a... Uh, even though he did round the goalie, he didn't get a window to, to play the shot. So he cut it back. I think he was aiming for Kieran Lee, but but Murphy was there and took the shot, but he, but he missed uh, the chance. Um, there was another uh, good effort a couple of minutes later where Murphy sort of put uh, a follow up from a kind of bu- you know bumbling bouncing ball uh, just a little bit wide with his volley but um I just made a note 
at the body bur- body burps Magoo was looking really sharp. I I was really impressed with Windass uh, today. Um, he put in a real shout for being a guy that should start the next game. Now, being Sheffield Wednesday this season, that means he will start the next game and do absolutely nothing. But um, he just appeared to be everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a really great uh, great performance for him. Um, there was a nice Wickham was dropping deep and trying to you know make things happen, but that meant he was all too often he wasn't really in the box where maybe we, we would have been better served by him being there. But he it, it wasn't for nothing him dropping deep. He did do some good stuff because um, he played a nice ball across to to Murphy um, and he played a great cross in for Forestieri, who is one of those where as a fan I'm I'm sat there watching it going throw yourself at it slide do so you know do something. It probably was too fast and too far away from him to be fair, but it just looked like, you know, if he was a couple of inches taller, he would have gobbled up the chance because it looked like a really good cross from from Murphy. Um, <clears throat> just, yeah, just chance after chance, really. Uh, yeah, I felt that, um, just kind of looking over my notes, that um, I think there's a shot from 55 minutes from Murphy where you thought, oh, if there's anybody I think in this game is going to stick his foot through one and just ripple yeah. the net, it's going to be Murphy. And he put it wide. And that just felt like it summed up the entirety of the game for Sheffield Wednesday today. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Um we kept trying, we kept making decent chances. Um, it was just those last little bits and pieces that didn't work for us. But we did, We eventually got a goal on the 72nd minute, uh, which was a great pass from, from Bannon out to Murphy, and then a brave finish from Josh Passingas, as I'm calling him now. Um, and uh, weirdly, Derby went made all of their subs on the 76th minute, so they, were, they weren't worried about kind of what playing for time late in the day. <laughs> they didn't hold back a sub to waste some time late on they 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 made them all tactically um my final name name i gave to to windass was uh big j king of the back queef um absolutely (laughs) everywhere big strong turn of pace vision and quality uh quality passing we need to see more of him but Mm -hmm. uh so what do we what do we make of a game like today, Luke? I don't know, just an absolute kind of uh, calamitous debacle um, comedy show. You know, the circus comes to town for forty five minutes at Hillsborough, and then seemingly the big tents being packed up, and um, the circus has moved on somewhere else, and actually seem like we actually have a decent spine and actually looking to attack in the second half. You know, a much better fist. You know, a second half clean sheet. Um, <laughs> Yes. A, re- a reminder that Iorfa, Iorfa is a good defender and even bringing out a much better performance from Burner in the second half as well. Like, we looked a lot more comfortable defending in the second. Just the problem is, again, it's just the question is, in these situations, what the question is asked of us, can we go and score multiple goals to kind of salvage and make something of this game? And the answer is clearly no. And we just, it just, it was heartbreaking that first 15 minutes that we were absolutely all over them and we just couldn't do anything with it. We just couldn't, we needed a goal for the sake of momentum to do something at that point. And at that point, it was like, well, you know, it looks like we know what's going on, you know, even though... even though yeah. at the 30 minute mark there were a lot of shots of Wednesday fans leaving the stadium but I don't know for me that's kind of the point where it's the point where you're starting to kind of really give up hope on the whole proceedings for the afternoon well similarly if we'd scored straight after getting our first goal as well it, mm. you know that's that could have been the spur you just yeah there's certain points where it, it's possible if X happens but it has to happen by a certain minute and yeah when you're three down you kind of need to get your first goal in that first 10 minutes I think to set yourself up because what tends to happen after you score that first goal is they adjust to the fact that they're really going to have to do some defending now the team generally feels a little bit more accomplished so some of that kind of verve goes so you you need the time (laughs) to kind of build up another head of steam yes Uh, and then another one for the last push um and the, yeah the fact that we got it was still 3-1 when we got to uh you know 85 minutes plus that's it was just never going to happen really you're talking you you're talking sort of pulling a miracle from from nowhere um but it it is just frustrating i don't like i say we got it so wrong first half uh 
I just wonder what what happens. So I, I've not watched enough Derby to know whether whether Derby did a brilliant switch and and we ne- we did it took us a half of football to catch up to it. Um, but knowing you know how into his tape and planning and everything Monk is, I'm amazed we were just got it so so wrong tactically in the first half because basically they want to pass it they're actually a team that looks pretty good passing it around the back they were able to make space with that and we didn't have any of the players on the pitch to really press them so they were given all of that time to keep keep picking passes i mean then you add in individual errors which you can't really account for but we were just on a hiding to nothing that midfield too <laughs> And Fletcher, who's still coming to fitness, we mm. were never going to be able to put the pace on, no. on them that no. we needed to. It's. Um, what did you think about the kind of wing options? Because it just, it, it never, I guess there was never really the space for them to run into in the first no. half. Well, we, we were so outnumbered, we needed them to pull in and be part of the midfield defensively. So we never got to see them do, we never got any of the benefits of our wit because we had to pull everybody in to make up numbers in the middle because we'd left ourselves so short. It <laughs> it was a hugely tactically inept, this performance, and it took too long to get anything changed and sorted. It, it, we should have known within about 10 minutes that the ball had been dropped in that regard and been able to, to make at least some changes to alleviate things. Just... Just we were just weren't able to pressure the ball at all. Like that, Kieran Lee and Barry, Barry Bannon as a two. We know, we know what happens with these two. I know, and yet still we're looking to invite that. It's five years. <clears throat> it they completely leave us bare defensively. It looks like we have no midfield when the opposition has the ball because neither of them are good enough at that side of the game. And they're uniquely unsuited to playing with each other because actually Kieran Lee's very good at tracking the ball. He's quite good at nipping in and taking possession. But his type of defending needs a covering defender. And Bannon, I don't know what Bannon's style of defending is, to be honest. It's just not good. His style of defending is bad defending. Um, him and Jacob Murphy are, are the, the, you know, the prime exporters of bad defending uh, within the Sheffield Wednesday side as it stands. Uh, both wonderful players going the other way. <laughs> uh, but I just, I just don't know. Was it too confident? I, I mean, we've had this kind of overconfidence. This squad, this team keep getting bitten by their overconfidence. Anytime they show an eye out mm. of cockiness or confidence, the the championship is more than happy to slam the door in their face and show them that they are nothing special. Uh, I mean, it's crazy to think that this was a kind of after the Lord Mayor's show performance from eking out a 1-0 win over Charlton. But that's almost what it was like. It's like we turned up expecting to outplay Derby Mm. and with none of the tools to actually sort of, as Monk always talks about, win the battle. We didn't put any, there was nothing, nobody on the pitch able to win a battle against anybody. Mm -hmm. And we like expected to turn up and, I don't know, blast them away with all our wonderful qualities. Well, it didn't happen. (laughs) But we, um, I guess in the, you know, in that aspect, I think in all those situations, you have to earn the chance to show your potential, really. Mm. You know, we didn't fight to earn that opportunity to, you know, create the space or the time or the opportunity for, I don't know, Forestieri to beam in a goal or, you know, any one of our players to do, I don't know, I'm, yeah. I'm forgetting what any of them can do at this point. I also... Time possibility i wonder again whether it's a a a, a legs thing as well um Mm -hmm. i think it felt too it feels like you know especially in hindsight felt too early to give fletcher a start he didn't really 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 struggle to do anything in the game and maybe three games in a week it's too much for forestieri because he didn't do anything today really he barely had any influence on the game and he got he disappeared second half he had that one you know he was up with Murphy where he should have maybe done better you know taken that chance or tried to get something on the end of it but that is that and a little chipped ball are about the sum total of all he did in the second half and that's when we had all of the possession and all the ball we we probably had probably had 60 percent of the ball second half and we never saw Forestieri Windass did all the things you'd expect Forestieri to do. He popped up in all those spaces and looked stronger, 
quicker, more confident doing it. Uh, but I, I, yeah, to be fair to Forestieri, maybe that's just he's not played that much football for three years and playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday again and starting each of those games. Maybe it was a bridge too far. Maybe he needed a rest today. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But all round, it's shocking that first half. Uh, and most shocking of all was our captain who, we again, we keep saying this, but why is he getting picked ahead of Dominic Iorfa? Why, oh, why? Did you see the story this week that he's um, joined the same agency as Gary Monk? No, I did not see that, no. He is now a client of Omni Sports, which did have me going, ah, ah, maybe that's what it's all about, is it? But um, apparently Hutch and uh, Winnall are both clients of Omni Sports as well, so maybe it doesn't mean very much at all. But you can you could hardly argue those two are getting preferential treatment. <laughs> maybe they're getting more days off than anyone else. Um, <laughs> should we do should we do some player ratings? Is that going to be too painful? Or ah, oh, I mean we can do. I've made very little notes, and I just felt it was just such a kind of weird mess that. I don't know. We can kind of go through and think about how the players did. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a shot. Worst comes to worst, we chop it out, and you just have like a highlight reel of me sighing, just the entirety of it, and you can just auto-tune me sighing. How about that? (laughs) Did you... Where do you stand? I'm just intrigued on this. Um, last last season, I was um, I've never really seen this before, and I guess we've been so far away from the big time that maybe this will happen more and more often. But last season, I, I, the one of the chaps I, I sit next to at um, Hillsborough, we were playing Stoke, and he was really really excited to get to see Crouch play. I'm really it's really I'm really oh I'm really chuffed mm. to get to see Crouchy. Mm. Um, and you could tell there was a bit of that uh, Rob on the the Wednesday commentary. Clearly, hugely excited to see Wayne Rooney trotting around on uh, on the pitch there at Hillsborough. Um, but do you? I don't really understand that. <laughs> do you know? Like I feel. I think it's a weird kind of like it's a bit of a kind of bit of it. I think it's a bit of a side to the like you know it. I think it's a little bit like I'm upgrading to sweet potato fries on this one. That's kind of how I think about it. <laughs> Um, you know, I was talking last night on the, um, and said, you know, is it, you know, is it exciting to see, I was asked, is it, is it exciting to see Rooney kind of playing? And I'm like, well, I saw him last year in the flesh for Montreal. Oh yeah. Um, in the MLS and, you know, it's like to that degree, I mean, as basically a kind of complete bystander to events, I thought that was interesting. It's interesting to see what can a player like this do in that context. And I guess I think it still probably has a little bit of interest, but I think it's probably, probably a bit more of an interest to a bystander. Like outside of that, I mean, genuinely, it's just one of those things I kind of watch my eyes kind of lull over while I'm watching the game and I'm just tediously bored at seeing, you know, another dire Wednesday defeat. Yeah. Unchallenged. Yeah, those moments where you're like, but I, I think here's the thing that I really want to see in that aspect is without, and I quite like Wayne Rooney as a player, but in that aspect where a, a, a player who comes, who is a superstar, you know, in that kind of wealth and that kind mm-hmm. of background and everything he's done within his career, what I really want to see um, is basically him being nullified by our players. Yes. Basically. And I offer you know, that we got that lovely moment second half when I offer just sort of stepped across him and dispossessed him and also kind of swiped him to the floor with his backside i really that was my favorite bit of the game to be honest i also liked the bit as well on a similar note was when um rooney fouled uh, murphy murphy got the better yes. of him down by the right and then Mur- and then rooney lost his shit at the referee for it that was fantastic <laughs> You know, I maybe think, I also I've started to see some of the parallels between Wayne Rooney and Barry Bannon. They're both <laughs> short. They're both not very um, attractive to the eye, bless them. Uh, they're both very adept kind of laying deep creative midfielders at this part in their career. Um, they're both beardy. Uh, they're both a bit shouty, a bit oiky. And, um, you know, Barry Bannon is Scottish. Uh, Wayne Rooney is Shrek. And, you know, Shrek yeah. is obviously voiced with a poor Scottish accent from Mike Myers. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. There's a lot of parallels there. Mm, endless. endless. Separated at birth. <laughs> Bannon also likes shagging grannies as well. <laughs> Allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly. But I, I think, I suppose, the, the flip side of that for me is, you know, Wayne Rooney is playing in the championship on merit. Uh, he tried to do the, 
okay, I can't play for Man United. I can play for another Premier League team. And he was rubbish. He yeah. cannot. He was. He cannot play. Could not play. This is now three years ago, I think. But he couldn't play for Everton. He was not not up to the pace of the Premier League game. So I, I suppose that's the thing. Is like what. I mean, might, he might do something that kind of rolls back the years. But by and large, he's just another all right championship footballer. I'd be more excited about seeing Tom Lawrence. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, no, I'm not excited at all about seeing Tom Lawrence. But <laughs> um, Yeah, but you... I know in terms of kind of an impact of the game and kind of pace and quality, Lawrence is one of those players who causes problems and did cause problems to the Chiefs. Yeah, I'm more... I suppose that's it. I'm more worried about the fact we're playing Tom Lawrence than Wayne Rooney because I don't think Wayne Rooney's going to do very much. Maybe a set piece. Anyway, it just it was interesting. I guess it's there's clearly- an interesting concept is like he's a player who still has quality on the ball, but obviously you have to afford him and give him time to have that quality on the ball. And which we did first half. We did, yeah. But but not acres of space, right? No, no. I don't um, know. I find it interesting because I think that basically there's been some hilarious comments. I think previously about like football players who've said, "Well, oh, um, you know, this player is so quality. He'd be better in a higher division because he'd have more space yes, and time yeah, on the ball." Yeah. Which is a real kind of hilarious kind of. Uh, Famously, Donny, Doncaster were a, a, a Premier League team that were unfortunately had to suffer the the wilds of League One because ah oh, they were given all that space in the Premier League. But they again, would've... that situation is you've got to have the quality to deal with situations where players are running at you and harrying you. Yes, and I, I think as the inverse of that, you know, a little that's, that feels a little bit muddy, but kind of related to what we were saying earlier. You have to give yourself the space and the time, and you have to create that. You have to create anything you can do to get that advantage on the pitch. And we are not doing that right now. No, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, the, the, just finally, on, on my, my movie, there was um, Rob was the prime sort of candidate on the on the commentary for uh, really just sort of idolising uh, Waza. But uh, John got in on a little bit of it as well, because there was a bit. It was a bit where Morgan Fox um, punted the ball straight at Wayne Rooney's face. And John Pearson went, oh, Rooney didn't even rub that, did he? Like like Wayne Rooney's really famous for how stoic his face is when it gets a ball batted off it. <laughs> Just really relishing the, the, old, the old Rooney stone face. <laughs> Anyway, um, well, let's let's whiz through some 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 ratings then. Um, how, how did you feel? Sort of Dawson did. I think Dawson did okay. I don't know how much he is to blame because everything's. I don't know. We've talked a lot about kind of you know when we do this kind of analysis of Wednesday at the back. You know, Dawson is particularly. He hasn't been completely innocent. No. He is being complicit in some of these crimes. Um, yes. But so much of the damage was done before him today. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can't forgive Lees and Burner making shaky passes to each other, to Harris just completely stroking it into the middle, um, to the fact that basically also further up the pitch, we look at the fact that we're losing the midfield battle, so you're asking more of the defenders. You just, in every of those situations, you're asking a little bit more of every person person to step up for the person who fucked up before them yeah yeah and it just becomes this unrelenting kind of chain reaction and by the time it gets to cameron dawson i don't think he's i, I don't think he could have done much better i'll be honest maybe maybe one of the no. goals he could have done he you know got his hand to one of them yeah he got his hand to the second one but it was that was a very tidy little finish from lawrence i and there was a player between him and the ball i don't think i think he yeah well it's once again you don't know whether a better goalkeeper maybe saves that. I think maybe the first one and the second one, arguably a better goalkeeper does a better job with. But it is picking, you know, it's it's being very picky. And as you say, it's not really his fault today. The fact that the captain is in front of him, you know, falling over and passing it to the opposition and jogging around just made everybody else's life so much harder. Um Individual errors killed us today, and and not having a team in place to even have a hope of of salvaging any of them. Because yes, Harris's pass to the middle is bad, but if we had a midfield, maybe we 
get to the ball first. But it's all, yeah, it's all, uh, it, it's a chain reaction of of one bad thing after another, and uh, it all it all ends up in us, uh, yeah, getting the kind of result that we pulled out of the bag today. Um, Maybe a six. So, yeah, let's go for that. That's fine. Uh, Liam Palmer. What did Palmer do? Did, did uh, I don't five point five? I'm gonna go for Palmer. Yeah, he didn't do too much either way, did he? No. It was. Uh, it was interesting second half because he was really very defensive and, and Murphy was doing quite a bit of covering back. So I don't know whether they were he was weirdly playing like almost a third centre back second half. It didn't really come to the fore because we weren't doing defending, but it, it was almost like I don't know. It was almost like Murphy um yeah, Murphy was playing wing back to an extent. But uh anyway. He, he let's uh I I'm happy with that that score. Uh Tom Tom Lees. What, what would you score for Tom Lees was the man who made me a man who is, I don't know how many thousands of miles away from Hillsborough, watching here from the sunny beaches of Calgary, Alberta, in my bedroom on my own, watching a projection, the game being projected onto my bedroom wall. He's a man who made me shout while I was on my, myself, oh, Lees, you fucking clown. <laughs> Just an absolute shambles of a performance today. I just, yeah, he's, it's a free. I'm giving him a free out of 10. He was just fucking garbage. Yeah. I don't understand. He should have taken a little bit of ounce of confidence from the game midweek. He just looked like that was just, just fucking slapped out of him very, very softly. You know, it's just... But he- he will be fine against a guy like Taylor because he's a reasonable athlete, Tom Lees. So he doesn't worry about a pacey guy because he knows he'll get positioning on him. He knows he's got a little bit of recovery pace and he'll probably be okay. He's not going to get exposed by a pacey guy, generally. One, he loses his mind is... I, oh, I'm only six foot, and this guy's six foot two. Oh, well, that means I'm not going to win a header all day, so better do this, that, and the other. Like, he's beaten before he steps on the pitch. He's beaten mm. before the first ball is lumped forward. Mm. And w- previously, we just had to deal with it. You know, so many times we've watched Wednesday let the big man win the first header and things like that, which is all desperate measures because you can't rely on your centre-back to compete aerially. But we've got a guy who's really big and strong and quick. And do you know what? In the second half, didn't hear a peep out of Chris Martin. Because <laughs> he had this big, strong guy who beat him for everything. <sighs> We've got choices now. Make the choices. Make a tough decision. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm losing faith in Monk so rapidly. <sighs> Over I'm the, just worried. His continual that, reliance on playing Tom Lees. Is he going to cling on to till to be part of the rebuild? Do we want Monk to be the guy in charge of the rebuild? Because this is shouldn't be a difficult choice to make, and he is making the wrong decision time and time again. It's unbelievable. Um, so sh- should we do? Because um, you know, obviously Tom Lee's only made the, made it to half time. Should we do his uh, <laughs> his swapped on player Dominic Iorfa? His replacement, Dominic Iolfo, was considerably better than Tom Lee's by a huge, huge, substantial amount. I think I'd probably go for a seven and a half for, for Dominic Iolfo. Yeah. It, just, it was just night and day, just how much of a more better and composed, how much more composed we are at the back with Iolfo and Berner. And it's thanks to Dominic Iolfo. And he doesn't look terrified in possession that's a you know it's just such a huge thing i know he's been caught a couple of times i think the last time he was caught it was more the fault of burner who really does play some terrible back passes to all of his teammates um he really stitched up dawson on one second half um but uh yeah i don't i'm i'm sick of saying it but play i offer and burner together i know stop with this nonsense I don't care if he's Omni Agency, Gemini Agency, whatever. Play the best players for the position. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tom Lees has always struggled against Chris Martin. He's always struggled against every big, tall striker. So play the guy that's bigger and stronger than him. <sighs> uh, Jules? Julian Berner, you know, again, to a similar degree regarding Dawson, as we said previously, Berner was explicitly complicit in that first half debacle. Yeah. You know, he's he may have made a kind of, um, I think maybe he's trying to make a bit of a Jim Carrey dramatic turn in his career, kind of going away from some of his comedic stuff. Um yeah. 
but it's like we understand that you were in the Truman Show and the Majestic, um, but we still remember you as Ace Ventura Pet Detective from the first half. <laughs> Or maybe Dumb and Dumber, really, as part of that kind of uh, him and Lee's kind of comedy mm. comedy act in the first half. So I still remember that that was you. You are not out of the woods yet, but <laughs> I feel has to be given some kudos for a much better... To be positive, I want to be more positive Yeah, um, towards Julian Burner. and Because I, I just I think it's just for someone who's come in and been a free signing... I don't believe of him being redacted. Um, I'm I'm still going to listen to uh, the Michael Jackson sucks. <laughs> <laughs> to which I to which I say to you, Rich. You know, I understand he's been redacted from your team of the year, but the man made thriller. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am joking. I'm not uh, defending defending the back work of Michael Jackson. I was just trying to make a dumb, stupid uh, joke for the sake of the podcast. And it was, and it was dumb, stupid. It was funny, but it was it was also dumb and stupid. <laughs> so I just apologize first and foremost before that gets carried away. Um, so I think for Burner, it comes out about a six. Yeah, fair I deuce. think the second half. But I mean, he, that's a pretty generous rating. I also think considering like he that second goal was really thanks to well, thanks to both Burner and Lees. Burner had no reason to stroke it to Lees no, in that time. No. Uh, Captain Fox Morgan, the Foxy Fox. Foxy Fox, probably a six as well. He was okay. Um, just wasn't a particularly good showing for the defenders. No, I thought he was I probably the he was the, he was the, the he was the better defenders. of them. Yeah. yeah, best of the starting eleven defenders or dead enders. <laughs> yes, I like. I'm like I'm glad he's back. Uh, I like his new found confidence on the ball. I like his enthusiasm. He's trying things attacking wise. None of them worked out particularly today, but he played a few different types of crosses. Um, he would, you know, on another day that own goal would have been it would have been his assist for that own goal, and um, he would have been you know the heartbeat of that turnaround. So um, he's one of the few that can kind of hold his head up high i think from their performance in in both halves uh but um yeah just didn't quite get the the breaks that would have made it a, an exceptionally good performance um jacob marley murphy oh jacob um <laughs> the cream crackers have gone very stale from last week um i think really? i think he put some kind of turn up paste on it or something like that. I mean, in terms of in terms of shooting, it was pretty dire today. I mean, that was the thing. That I kind thought of there were tough heart. chances. I thought there were tough chances. I don't think it was like he never he didn't have one chance as good as the one he took against Birmingham. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I okay. Wow. Well. I, I think the layback from Wickham wasn't for him. I think it was a pass to to Lee, but he was confident. He, he's he's in the sort of form where he's like trying to gobble up everything. So he hit it with his weaker foot. And did and missed, but I've got no confidence that Tom Lee, uh, that uh, Kieran Lee would have done any better with the chance. Uh, and then his other one was a, a, a sort of bobbling volley. I know, we, I, yeah, he was the potentially he was the difference because he's got the quality. Yeah. He was if maybe the difference between us getting something out of the game and not. But I thought I thought he was. I mean, bright. It, I still really like. I'm still enjoying his work, and um, I, I I think for me he was up there with sort of what probably man of the match. Uh, consideration. I guess but, so. Uh, I maybe I think if we're talking, I'm going to stretch to a seven mm. for him. I mean, it was an assist as well, and it was a nice cross. Yeah. Did we even talk about the Wednesday goal? No, <laughs> no, we didn't get that. <laughs> They'll just capture. I, think I was the player, too excited right? with all my different um, synonyms for fart that I was doing. <laughs> it was good. I liked it. It was a good oh. great finish from 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 Windass as well. Was, yeah, actually, we did, we did, we covered it in passing. I do remember it now. Um, uh, uh, um, Kieran Lee, six, six for Lee. Yeah, he he was there. <laughs> He just didn't have a huge influence on things. Same with Bannon, I would say. I mean, let's let's go to Bannon. I gave him a six as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not Can much influence Harris? for both of them. Um, I don't know if Harris was that bad to be hauled off. No, so soon. it seemed unfair. Obviously, it, it was a howling error. It was a big error. And maybe for that reason, we'll give him a 5.5. He does... 
it's a bit of a bad habit he has, I think. He can panic if he's not allowed to turn by his man. I think he does that sort of pass more often than not, but mostly we're because we're in a, a sort of attacking shape for it. We can we can cope with it. Somebody's kind of on the front foot and able to pick it up. But um it's not a good trait to have when you're pressed by your fullback to sort of turn around and then freak out and blindly play it over your shoulder. It's not a good trait. <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 no. to have in your game but he's old enough now that that's probably baked in pretty well I've, um, you know, it's probably just something that he's always done um, so obviously he got hauled off so it makes sense maybe to talk about Wickham at this stage yeah Wickham uh, w- yeah Wickham was alright I think today I maybe. think it's best showing for us <clears throat> since since, uh, since he came back not where you want him to be <laughs> necessarily no no which I guess, yeah, the funny thing was he was taken on for a winger, but then, you know, he wasn't really supposed to be playing on the wing, but he did play on the wing. I don't know whether that was partly to facilitate Forestieri and Windass's movement, so he was trying to fill gaps, maybe. You know, maybe it was nice reasons that he was doing it. Um, but he also just might have just been frustrated and wanted just wanting to get the ball. It did remind me a little bit of a kind of Wayne Rooney-esque performance in some ways, because that was one of the criticisms of, of Rooney, was... He was involved in all the kind of build-up and often that meant he wasn't in the box getting the goals that he should have. Mm -hmm. Um, Because he did, he had a really good influence on a couple of really high, our our better bits of play tended to be involving Wickham at some stage or other. Sure, but I think that's unfair to kind of comparison with Rooney because, you know, Rooney has regressed back, you know, the pitch much like his hairline, really. (laughs) And much much like... And much like the Shrek sequels has gone backwards as well. I, I'm I'm not talking anywhere near the quality of a prime Rooney, but it was always a criticism of his game because he got frustrated and want, he always wanted to be involved. He would get deeper and deeper, which is kind of good from a teamwork perspective, but it's not necessarily what you want your striker to do. And just like Barry Bannon as well. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, same thing. Um, comes from a good place, but maybe not helpful in in the in the round. Um, so, did we give him a score? Six point five. Okay, fair enough. I think I... he's been better in other games, but I, okay. I, oh. I I he was good. He was good. Let's be honest. I think he should have started. I'll be honest. I yeah. didn't know why Fletcher started and said. Anyway. I know. Well, um, I suppose with Fletcher, there may well have been, particularly with the celebrations, because Fletcher was on his way to give Gary Monk a big, a big man hug. Um, got distracted on the way, but, but and Barry Bannon did it instead. <coughs> but um, I do remember Brian Laws with... Uh, with JJ just so excited to have him on the bench that he would frequently bring him back way too soon. (laughs) And maybe there's a bit of that with Monk that he's just so pleased to see Fletcher back. And he's kind of, you know, people always talk about players getting better in their absence and Fletcher has become monumental in his absence this season because it is absolutely night and day when he's played and when he hasn't. Um, And Monk's probably he's added to that because he's come back and we immediately get our first league win of the the year um our first home goal of the year you know all those th- all those hoodoos are put to bed but only once Stephen Fletcher comes back um so I, c- I can understand the thinking behind it but you, the manager is the one person you hope is sensible of, enough to not get caught up in those silly things <laughs> but unfortunately it seems like he did um Fernando Forestieri well let's give Forestieri a 6 you know I mean he was yeah. or maybe a 5.5 I don't know it wasn't wasn't sterling today no uh, I, it's hard to think of the things he did to be honest as I say he had those couple of little moments first half one of them was something he did well another one was something he didn't do very well um and outside of that he just was completely anonymous he didn't get in the game at all first half and didn't really seem to be working very hard to change anything about that um and second half it again it just completely passed him by um so finally we've got Stephen Fletcher and we should do Windass really uh, sometime soon um, yeah well let's do uh, let's get Fletcher out of the way with a six for Fletcher he's not yeah. you know he's still not sharp enough to be you know involved in this much we no. miss him we need him I see the argument for minutes but it wasn't the game for him to start it, it wasn't for him I don't know why we started him and it just didn't work either no not at all it was a gamble that has, has not paid off 
one of many of late. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, Josh Windy asked Trumpy Bomb. And he was really good. Um, I think I'm going to go for a... Let's go for a 7.5. Yeah. I think Undoubtedly probably, our man of the match today. I wonder if it's kind of in sharing with Iorfa. Maybe, I think, maybe, yeah. Them kind of come out. But yeah, also the fact that he scored. He got gone. Yeah, he looked bright. I mean, this is the thing. It's like, well, I think when he plays, I don't really know what position he plays in. But you know, he's everywhere with a certain confidence. So you know, I think, I think er- was... anywhere he demands or wants to play on the pitch, he has a right to, and he kind of carries that with a sense of confidence that I can be on the wing, I can be up front, I can be yeah. through the middle of the park. Yeah, you know, he does offer us something very different, and I'm really glad we signed him and brought him in for the spell. Yeah, I just want to see more of him now after that, to be honest. Um, I feel he's been unlucky to be the one that we've seen the least of out of those three deadline day signings. Um, And yeah, I think he's earned his right to get a couple of, at least a couple of starts in a row now to see if he can build something for us. Because for me, he looks like the sort of player we want Forestieri to be, but all too often the last couple of seasons, Forestieri has, has not done that. Mm. Um, there's probably a mix within the fan base of people that think he still can but just it's it's you know form that he's not found yet and people who think that you know he's kind of done in that regard but either way it's hard to argue that Windass's second hand half half performance wasn't you know leagues better than anything we've seen from Forestieri probably for two years by and large mm. I don't know, maybe a stretch. Forestieri yeah, did have a good spell. Um, I guess the got... interesting thing I kind of want to say from that is, I think here's a real quality I want to say. Like, we've seen a lot of industry from Forestieri, mm. um, which has been fantastic because previously I felt in, like, very much the early stint of Forestieri at Sheffield Wednesday, he had that quality, but he also had that industry to kind of back it up. Yeah. And yeah. it felt like both of them meshed incredibly well. And right yeah. now, the weird thing is, Forestieri doesn't seem to be having the flair, but yet having the industry as well. And yes. the interesting thing I want to say about Windass is the fact that um, he, he he does have industry, but he makes it look so effortless. He does. And it's just, it's it's incredible. Yeah, let's just, I'm, it's that was mouth-watering, that second half. I want to see more of him. It, he might show that that's a kind of, once in a blue moon, he doesn't do that that often. We don't, a bit like De Cruz, you know, we don't know that much about him. We, um, we've, we've, you know, we only know, we can only go on what we've seen. But he certainly comes with a certain reputation. Um, I mean, you'd almost say Rich is a footballer until proven uh, otherwise. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'd go the other way. I, I, For me, I'm a pessimist. They're a non-footballer <laughs> until they show me they can play football. Um, so, yeah, De Cruz in this case... I haven't seen anything to show me that he's a particularly special footballer. And on the on the evidence I've seen as a Sheffield Wednesday fan, I would certainly be picking Windass ahead of De Cruz every time at the moment. It might all change, but yeah, on what we've seen, he's you're he's... saying you're saying the glove does not fit for uh, De Cruz. <laughs> exactly, and if the if the if the glove does not quit, you must drop it. And in this case. <laughs> It is the cruise. Uh, but yeah, I think he's... Let's give him a try. Let's see what we can get out of him because that was promising. That was nice to see. It, on a day that was pretty dreadful, Josh Windass stood out by a mile. Uh, he's got a real physical presence. He's a big lad, but he moves yeah. really well. I mean, I don't understand... In some ways, I don't really understand... Well, you know, he's, he is built like a, uh, a, a, a swimming model, isn't he? He is, he is. He's got that classic swimwear model physique, those big shoulders, nice pair of lats on him. Um, and oh, you better believe he's rocking some pecs under that shirt. Tell you what, I tell you what. <laughs> I've been talking to the Accrington Stanley manager. Oh, some of the dressing room shots he was able to share with me. Oh. The toes will curl when that chap takes his shirt off. <laughs> Good stuff. Different gravy, the homoerotic and scatologically focused podcast. <laughs> but the other thing, and this is not nothing, for a team that don't score many goals, uh, Josh Windass has barely played and he has two goals. There are a whole heap of players who've played up front for us and got none. So let's give him a chance to show. It's hit, For me, it's now he's got a place 
in either starting or the, or one of the first choices off the bench until until he shows he's not worthy of it. And I suspect he will show us he's he's more than worthy of it. It's he looks like a real player. Yeah. And that's the, the one of the big things to take away from today. Mm-hmm. I also think if you played him as, as the one up front, like Forestieri played against Birmingham, he'd probably do a better job just because he's built like a target man. So he might win the odd header as well as being able to do the stretching move it, movement part of the game that, that Forestieri did so well. Um, yeah, let's... Um, you know, let's hook our wagon to his star and see how far we can take it. <laughs> There's not much else to get excited about the second half of this season. So, you know, let's go for it. Um, is that us, Luke? Are we done? I think it is. And then, uh, oh, joy of joys. Uh, one comment I wanted to make as well was seeing the uh, the rather savage advertisements um, for the Man City game, oh, which yes. is our next up game. How could we forget? <laughs> um, a little kind of cup cup debacle, a little cup kind of uh, oh, looking at conflict. the <laughs> looking at the the um, oh, all of the uh, the respect that we showed to Derby County. Oh, it really, really, really worried me about the Man City game. If we stand mm. and watch them play like that. I also enjoyed a, another comment. So the Man City game probably advertised it looking like it was using the same font as Tesco. So that made me think about misery, only £25, like a bucket of organic misery strawberries. <laughs> Every little helps. Every little help. Uh, the the, the, the advertising, I, I most... Uh, preparing the noose to hang ourselves. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, the advertising I I noticed most prominently was the men's pharmacy. I was uh, I hadn't men's noticed pharmacy. that before. Yeah, you can get your Viagra online now, Luke. It's, it's, these are exciting times we live in. Hims dot com for hims dot com. <laughs> it's a bit like it's a bit. It seemed like it's our uh, it's our uh, yeah our uh, UK version of hims dot com. Maybe awesome. that's the answer to our defensive problems. If uh, if Mister Burner is um, you know as as advertised, that could perform you know quite a formidable extra um, barricade for, for the attack for the opposition. Well, I, to I get, mean to get kind of link that. I think if we made this comment very early on the podcast um, to link that. Uh, to link that podcasting and football world, I would like to say how much I'd like to see Joe Rogan as our director of football. Maybe <laughs> you can get the lads on it. dot com. Oh, imagine Barry Bannon with some alpha brain. <laughs> oh, wonders have never seen. <laughs> Maybe we should um, put Lee's on some DMT and feed it, leave him in the forest. <laughs> I certainly would prefer to see him in an isolation tank than uh, playing centre back for Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> well, he will float because he is shit, right? <laughs> oh, everyone floats down here, Luke. Everyone floats. Um, right. Yeah, I'm going to say cheerio and wish you a, 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 one, a pleasant week. And who knows what ha- will happen against Man City? We're going to mainline spirit of the FA Cup between now and uh, and Wednesday night, and uh, we're going to absolutely slap it up them. I think Pep won't know what's hit him. I will um, like you know. I wish you all a blessed watching of the Man City game to all the uh, Wednesday fans. I am, I'm going. Oh, it's and, a red uh, midweek jaunt to Hillsborough. And cynically, like Dave Allen, I will say, enjoy your football. <laughs> I can't think of anything better to end things on than that. So, cheerio, Luke. Have a good one.